Now then, the year's moving on, and this is Home Life 25, the month of August. Lots of little bits and pieces happening. I hope you enjoy it. So we're in the veg plot, and the leeks are coming on tremendously, although you can't really see them at this angle. But uh, yet another row of lettuce in there. There was one row there, and then uh, when they finished, it's the only available space, so I dug a bit, little bit more compost in there, turned it over a little bit, and added those lettuce plants that were in pots just up here there we go that are leaks from last year that and the sun's just coming out that were uh, that have gone to seed they're flowering we'll get seed off those coming down And we've got some borage there, and the bees are loving that. And then just up here, we have flowers and green beans. And it's a little bit tricky to see in the viewfinder but there you go these are purple beans but of course they go green when you uh, when you cook them and there we are you see I can't tell whether the camera is focusing on the wire or the or the leaks but they're a decent size and they will keep um, keep going just behind the leaks I don't know whether we can see from here We've got some netting there, and that is over the purple sprouting and the kale. So those of you who have been paying attention may have noticed that I've been sorting out this steel stock. Yeah. And I took some of it down the scrapyard and came back with a few interesting things. Like, for instance, of that piece of box section. It's 120 mil square. So in other words, that is pellet boiler burner liner. You remember I made one a while ago and had to m use a different size and cut two bits and weld it together. Uh, just because this, that sort of, most of box section that size is 125 and just I just happened to come across a bit of 120 and um, that'll do oil it up put it in the boiler shed and we've got that in stock there there's at least four liners in that maybe even five another interesting thing is this this didn't come from the scrapyard and uh, taper and then a weird sort of arrangement with a step and a big square hole and then a square rectangular hole there and that looks to me like a a wheel shaft off a wooden cart that would bolt onto the wooden axle and the interesting thing is, it looks like it's never been used. There's no marks or wear points on that taper bit where the wheel fits. That's interesting. Must have been sat around for like 140 years or something like that. And then uh, a little bit of a heads up on an upcoming video. We've got a Husqvarna 372XP here in need of some TLC I think it's been partially seized so I'll be doing a, 
an exploratory video and maybe a fix sometime before Christmas yeah that'll be interesting it's um it's good to hold on to a few projects for when the the um, the days get wet and cold and whatnot and you want to get into the workshop have a part pile of potential projects there and then you can take your pick yeah get the get the wood stove going just investigate but um, it hasn't got an exhaust it feels tight and part of the the dead man trigger is missing uh, beyond that I'm not sure I haven't really investigated yet see there it's missing but we shall um, continue on and this uh, walnut tree is just extending and extending and it's just keeping going but we've got loads of walnuts on it there you go absolutely loads of them they're all over it so another I don't know another month probably you have to be careful as soon as the squirrels start going for them you've got to be um, pay attention and it's it's not a small tree but it's up against the coast redwood so this is the east 60 foot meadow and it's bounded by these trees on the east that we planted and that uh, area of greenery there is a drainage ditch and of course a path on the edge of the woods and of course the hay's been cut and uh, baled etc and then I've topped this and now I can see that there's some work to be done and just over there one of the Monterey Pines yeah, has got, where are we, has got a branch half snapped off so that one's pruning off so let's crack on and do that So there you go, and it goes up in the uh, snapped out crown there. I had marked this tree to, to come out but I thought there's no point really. It's up against the hedge and it's in a row of others so just taking it out it won't increase the, uh, the meadow really and you know it's just a variation of habitat. So I'm just going to get the silky saw and take that out or reduce it or something.
there you go an old cone where probably most of the seed is gone and a newish one so if you put that somewhere warm it will open up and release the seed and we can sow those grow them on and I spent a bit of time helping out the sawmill and there'll be a separate video about that As the undergrowth in the woods has um, died down that time of year and also it's been quite dry then the odd pile of firewood that got missed in the spring from the winter's cutting uh, has revealed itself so I'm just extracting this last pile and this of course will be for not this winter the winter after the winter of 2022 So I've just been having a bit of a problem with the trickle charger on this little 275 International. It's the one that runs my firewood saw. It's a bit rough but it keeps going and I've had it for donkey's years. Anyway, that's a mains, mains cable connection. But it just connects to the battery. And we've got the ubiquitous um, connectors there and then this yellow cable comes all the way up and it's going to get dark anyway it ends up coming down this post to this light bulb there we are so one side of that light bulb is 50 volts DC and the other side is battery voltage and it wasn't working correctly. Let me just set the camera up. So I've got the multimeter set on DC volts and we've got a red and a black there. I put a light on the situation but hopefully uh, hopefully you can see it. And it goes 49.5 volts. Okay hopefully you can see that. And then so we go from the positive DC down through the light bulb back up to the battery connections that's the positive battery connection and it comes back as the negative 13.9 hopefully most of you know why but that is a resistance and at night you can see it very dimly glowing um, which is a good indicator anyway for the last week or two I haven't really been paying attention and then I noticed at night that that wasn't glowing I thought what on earth is going on so I went through everything and uh, this is what I found it's amazing. I went through the connections here, there and everywhere on the bulb in that little uh, connector block there. Just there. Yeah, which is where I've been measuring. And uh, well, I was getting odd voltages. I mean, I was definitely getting battery voltage at those bottom terminals there. 
but it was quite low it was 12.6 something like that so obviously the charging system wasn't working so then it was time to follow this wire up there which goes up and along a beam and then down to another post so let's go and have a look there so the wire comes down this post from the beam and it comes to this connector here okay that's a new connector and what I found was on the positive side the uh, the cable had corroded at the connection I find that very odd because um, that connector is plastic so it's an insulator it's screwed on wood which is an insulator it's out outside of direct water or anything like that so what can how could that have happened now I know in the old-fashioned cars that had positive earth the earth used to rot out so it's something to do with that electrolysis but this is totally insulated I haven't I really don't know why but let's just have a look at um, the offending article so here we go I broke that out of the way and I've lost most of it but as you can see that's all corroded so that was the positive and the negative was over here so far enough away but something's going on I know it's um, electrolytic corrosion of some form but I don't quite understand why any comments much appreciated so it's getting towards the end of the month and you see how these um, lettuces are cracking on yeah we've started cutting them which is great and the squashes which are over there are going mad and so they are over there as well so I'll be getting pumpkins and the like and let's just have a look at the tomatoes and we've been having tomatoes for a few weeks now this year these are the best the Elsa Craig without a shadow of a doubt and um, gardeners delight they're beautiful really nice and these uh, potato there was a couple of potatoes that were shooting and um, yeah they've really grown on there's two in that pot there so you know we'll start flowering and we can have uh, late new potatoes and just down there only yesterday I potted on another lot of lettuce and coming through we've got um, the peppers and they're getting quite large now and just following through again there's some more lettuce there it's all growing on still even though we're at the end of August now right leave you with that and I've been working on some uh, lithium ion battery packs using 18650 cells and this is some nickel battery strapping and a youtuber put up a video about making a uh, spot welder there we go and um, one thing I found out that's great good isn't it 
is that you don't want to use a fully charged battery. You want one that's sort of, there's plenty of power in it, but it's not really high on volts. In fact, let's just see what the volts are on this battery now. Yeah, 12.5. If you're on 13.6 or something like that, uh, it tends to zap too much. Ow. It tends to be a little bit too strong. That's great. That's great. I'm pleased about that. Right. And so we continue again. I'm going to get the 684 tractor out and the topper and I'm going to top the, some of the meadows because they're getting mighty long and um, uh, get it done before they get too long and then you've got these great big long bits of grass that get tangled up everywhere. So that's the rest of the morning sorting that out. There's a nice Scots pine. This is the new planting. They're all growing away quite nicely. Hello, we've got a thistle there. I'll have to sort that out. That's a larch. Doing quite well. And these older are phenomenal. Now you remember these older I think I sowed the seed two years ago and they were in pots and we planted them and they were halfway up the tube so they've oh five times bigger but they were planted at the right time and they were they were pit planted but only small pits but it was in January and they're phenomenal they've really gone for it I'm very pleased yeah I think we had that uh, I might have said this already and there's a Norway maple um, what was I saying oh yes uh, there's a red oak and another red oak we planted them in January and we had that really quite cool spring until late April and it just held things back enough and then we had some dry and warm and then some wet and it's just worked out fairly good. There's a couple here that are not as big but um, you know I'd say that they were fairly well established and these red oaks you see they're pretty good they are um, they were halfway up the tube so they've got at least three times bigger yeah we've got something on the leading tip there that's had a good munch at that leading shoot what's the other one like well the bud seems to have gone caterpillars or something can you hear those uh, young pheasants beep 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 just in that shelter belt over there yeah what we got here, we've got some grass in there. This is where you really got to um, do your maintenance. That in there looks like a grand fur. So I'm going to have to just come round here and just clean the occasional one where there's another grand fur. It's sat there not doing very much. These are ones that I rescued. They were um, that one's doing a bit better. 
they were in planting plugs and they were just not being watered and I thought right we've got to do something about that there's another one yeah but we've got a nettle so I'm going to spend five or ten minutes just going round these there's another one but it's um, doing quite well just going to weed them then obviously the olders don't need it but these other ones that have taken a bit more time to get established um, we just help them along so this is one of the Wellingtonias that we planted about 1990 something like that and it's uh, really quite big now which is brilliant Anyway, that's uh, 25 over and we're moving into the next season of the year. Yeah, we're starting to get cooler breezes, etc. And the uh, nights are drawing in. So anyway, there's lots of things uh, due up. I've got a fair few videos in the can, as it were. Lots of interesting stuff. So we shall keep ourselves amused over the the coming autumn winter time I don't know which video is coming up next but uh, keep in touch and we'll all find out catch up with you soon cheers for now <laughs>